Um, okay. So today, we'll do a more refined and general version of what we did last time, so we formulated the power series. So, one of our intermediate goals will be the following theorem. So, suppose I, uh, in the real numbers, is an interval. And let's take fk functions on I, each of which is k minus 1 times continuously differentiable. And for a function on I, we'll define the ith norm of f be the supremum over x and i of the i derivative of f divided by x divided by i factorial. Just like a L infinity norm for the derivatives, it will be normalized. Okay? Okay, one more piece of notation. Well, that v of n real numbers, x1 through xn. Let me write x1 through xk, so we're using k. k runs <coughs> be the value of determinant. So the product of i less than j of xi minus xj. Look at the theorem. following, that if you look at the determinant the, uh, of the matrix, or by evaluating the k functions of f1 through fk, at the k points x1 through xk, so here we have 1, this is most, at least i and j, which are both k, So this is bounded above by the usual van der Maan determinant. I'll write it this way, times n factorial times the supremum over all permutation sigma. Product of the jth norm, sorry, of the sigma jth norm of fj. Okay, so we're looking at like, for example, if n equals 2, we have the maximum here over like f1 and f2 prime, and then f1 prime and f2. Okay. Um, so you can see this would be useful, this is sort of exactly the value of the simplex form of by these functions, and so we're making the argument we made last time. Just to kind of think what comes up. Sorry, um, did, I, did I mess something up? I'm just getting confused with your k's and n's. Oh, no, yes, you're right. All the m's should be k's. Oh, okay. Sorry, my, my brain just wants to write n, <laughs> but it was k in the paper, so I had a long internal struggle. <laughs> okay. Yeah, oh, there shouldn't be any answer, yeah, only one last variable. Okay. Other the, the only okay. Um, all right, so it, it's kind of cool that how precise you can make this because uh, this constant here is sharp. Okay, as we'll sort of see how we can get the how it's sharp. Um, all right, um, this is the F zero. So we'll give a, a slightly different proof to the one that you know the other here again. Not because I'm not, I'm not proof, but the idea is basically the same, I think. 
Um, so to prove this, we'll start with um, an intermediate proposition. So suppose you have f, just one of the functions. And let's interpolate f at the, at the values x1 through xk with a polynomial of degree k minus 1. So let's write f of x psi is the sum j equals 0 to k minus 1 of aj xi to the j for all i to the bottom k. In case we're interpolating the graph of f, please. A point of the group came out as one of the other. The unique determines the, the AJs. Okay, so if we do this, then if you look at the highest coefficient, K minus one, this is bounded above. K minus one more. It's also clear sharp, as you can see by taking f to be equal to this polynomial. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Okay. So just so we don't sort of lose track, let me first prove that this proposition implies theorem, and then we'll just focus. Okay, so suppose this is true, and let's interpolate all the functions f1 through fk with their own polynomials. So write, um, so take numbers a i j so that if you look at f j of x i it's a sum of m from 0 to k minus 1 of a j i um, sorry of a j m X i to the m. Okay. Then we have a, a matrix identity. Over, now we're going to pick k minus 1. 
we have to pick which guy we're expanding along. So J goes from 0 to K minus 1. So of A, J, K minus 1, which by the proposition is bounded above by this guy. Right? Times the determinant of the other guys. So times the determinant of A uh, of A, we write it as R, S. We're now, we're, we're sort of expanding along this guy, so if we erase it, so now we have um, S goes between 1 and, I'm sorry, this is the... In the bottom row, I think the exponent, so to speak, the index in the exponent should be K. Ah, I see. That's probably confusing me. In the bottom row, the index of the exponent should be K. Because that's the J's. Right. Um, yes, that sounds right. But over there, I have it. Uh, go, oh, yes, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. This is K here. So this is K. Right, ah, sorry, so I got confused. We're, 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 let's, we're expanding along the, the rightmost uh, column, not the bottom row. Right, we want the high degree coefficients, which is the A sub K minus 1, that's here. Right. Sorry, so we're expanding along the, the rightmost column. We have this, and now so this, uh, yeah, so R is between 1 and K minus 2. And uh, S is between 1 and K minus 1, except for now we're omitting, omitting the Jth guy. So um, S. S doesn't equal J. That sound right? R is between 0 and yeah, I'm And we made the J again. Okay. Anyways, the point is we get the similar determinant here, to where we have removed a variable, and we drop the degree by 1. And so now we can write a similar identity like this for the partial guy. And so this is equal to, so up and values, I guess, everywhere. Times, and what do we have here? Well, here we have the same thing. Let me call this a FRX, S, I guess. Through, and now we're going to drop order of the X's. Let's only go through K minus 1. And here we have uh, R doesn't equal J. But we have a similar identity because now the first k minus one points interpolate, interpolate the first k minus one functions with these a's. So we have it's exactly the identity. And now we can apply induction. So again, this is less than or equal to. So just by iterating this procedure over and over again, the sum. Um, over all permutation sigma of fj sigma j of the of the product of this product over j. Okay, and so just by picking which one is biggest now we get this out of the one. There's a, there's a, a a trick here that's being covered up, which I just want to say a couple words about. So, um, this inequality is true. So, in some sense, interpolating f in this way is a little bit arbitrary, because we're sort of picking zero as the center. You just as well interpolate it with x, x i minus one to the j, for example. Okay, and that would change all the coefficients except for the k minus first one. So, in some sense, all the coefficients here besides the k minus first one are sort of arbitrary. That they depend on the choice that we've made. And so we can't expect the qualities with those guys that are nearly as nice. And so we write this identity, and this sort of column is canonical, and this column, the rest of the entries very much are not. And so we sort of do this trick. We apply our equality for the canonical guy, 
Then we have this Romania determinant, which we then sort of, again, repackage as just a determinant of the Fs over this thing, which again is canonical. Then we reinterpolate the remaining guys, and we keep playing the trick over and over again. So implicit here is a sort of reinterpolation over and over by polynomials, keeping track of only the important coefficients. Okay? So, anyways. Um, questions about the proof? Is it somewhere in there? All right. So as soon as we have this, uh, we have the theorem of one. So this, this is, I guess, in some sense, the strong conclusion that we wrote down, but it doesn't actually matter. I don't think that it's actually useful anyway. Okay, now I want to prove this proposition. So let me continue the idea. Handle the simple case of n equal to 2. It would also be a reflection step, I guess. In the case n equals 2, we'll have x1 and x2, and we pick a0 and a1. And then we're bound A1, but what's A1 equal to? So it's not hard to see that A1 is equal to this. Which we can write as the integral from x1 to x2 normalized of f prime. So A1 can be at most a normal best friend. Great. Nothing, nothing <laughs> fancy happening here. Um, all right. So we're going to do the same kind of thing for higher n. But to do that, we have to generalize this identity to something a little more combinatorially um, tricky. And so we have the following lemma. Do that. So suppose n is at least 2, and take delta n minus 1 to be the sort of standard n minus 1 simplex. And, and so this, this has a, a natural volume on it, and I want to pick the one that satisfies the volume of delta n minus 1 is 1 over n minus 1 factorial. Basically, the measure you get by projecting onto any n minus 1 of the coordinates and taking the standard measure. Okay, then. Thank <laughs> you. 
Um, right, so now we integrate each individual term. And so for each term at the top, what we get is sum of k less than n f of dk. Then we add in the over dk minus the n term. So now we have what we want. J w to k, dk minus dj. And now each one of these terms also gives us an f of dn. Okay, but now this 
is equal to this integral and uh, it follows that the absolute value of this is at most the volume of this guy which is 1 over n factorial times the supremum of the n minus first derivative the t minus first derivative of that. Okay, 
Okay, suppose that gamma, first of all, is a curve P of x, y equals zero, where the degree P equals D. So first thing you want to do is I want to put P into a nice form. So I'm going to make a linear change of variables so that the x to the D term and the y to the D term are both non-zero. Okay, so I'll apply an SO2Z transformation, which takes a box of radius n to a box of radius c n, or some constant c, so we can change anything. So that p of x, y equals like a x to the d equals b y to the d, plus a whole bunch of other stuff. I want a and b to not be zero, it just sort of makes things simpler. Um, okay, so now what we're going to do, we want a bunch of functions to be bent to a high dimensional space. So we let the set S sub delta, where delta will be some very large numbers, these are monomials, x to the i, y to the j, where either i or j are at most d minus 1, and i plus j, well, we just write it in the max, now I'll tell you this one, and i plus j at most of So I think Victoria just helps me think about it. So if you look at some of the i and j axes, Taking all of these monomials up to uh, up to delta. Here. Okay. Now, because our p of x y is in this form, if we multiply it by anything, by any polynomial, we get at least one monomial in here. Again, like the highest x or the y coefficient will be something up in here. So all the functions in S delta are linearly independent uh, on gamma. So there's no linear combination of these that vanishes on gamma. And the size, the number of these functions is, well, it's roughly twice d delta. I'll just write this for the big old. I don't want to keep track of things precisely, but they do it. Okay. So again, we're going to be using the sort of combinatorics of monomials that we have sort of two d delta monomials of degree at most delta, and somehow that's going to give us the, the d at the end of the line. Okay, but now the idea is we embed via all of these functions. Um, so, so, um, so first of all, um, So expand gamma in a Puzo series at infinity. And so we can write y equals the sum of r at most 1 of a r times next to the r. So these r's are in some z divided by some number d. And now that we can take, it's very important, we can take r to be at most 1. It would pick y to be the bigger variable of x and y on gamma. So if on gamma x grows faster than y, we would expand, extend, ex, instead expand x in a Pizzo series in y. It would have this be at most 1. Okay. Okay, 
Okay, then for um, and then let's pick a point um, x not y not given and I um, an integral around let's do this assume that uh, x not is around n and let's pick I to be an interval around x not y not Okay, then if we let f1 through fr be the functions in S delta, so the, the monomial of xi y to the j S delta. Okay. Then if we look at fi of xy, xy being on gamma, we can write this, so for xy and gamma, we can write this um, as x to the a, y to the b, or a plus b is at most delta. And so we can expand this, again, as some Rousseau series in S, where S lives most delta. Those series in X, where now the living form is most delta. We're taking some power of X, then this power of Y. The Rousseau series starts at X to delta and then goes down. In other words, if we look at, as long as I is not the whole interval, if we look at Fi and we look at its, um, let's say, uh, uh, Df, is Df thing already? I'm going to be very well all of a sudden. Uh, Lf norm, we differentiate L times, the leading exponent goes down by L, and so this is bounded above by N to the delta minus L. Okay. Okay, so now if sort of X one, Y one. X R Y R are points in gamma intersect z squared inside this box, and the X I are in this integral I, and these guys are not in an algebraic curve of degree R. Sorry, are not in algebraic curve uh, spanned by the monomial of S delta. Then we have one is at most this is determinant, these are all integers. And by a theorem, this is most of value one determinant, which is this guy, the size of i to the r plus two, because that's how far away any of these guys are. Multiplied by the supremum over all permutations of fj of sigma j norm to so fj. Now we're just plugging that bound, plugging the Rousseau expansion. So this is at most i to the r choose 2 times n to the sum delta minus i, we have the delta, delta minus 1, delta minus 2, and so on. And this is equal to, so the exponent of i we get is roughly 2d squared delta squared, up to some linear term in delta. And the exponent in n we get, if we um, sum this up, because r is roughly 2d delta, is n to the um, 
delta squared times 2d, so right, there's 2 delta squared d, 1 minus d, plus big O of delta. So nothing you think of it is calculating the exponent of the, the sum term. So if we take delta very large, the ratio becomes 1 minus d, d minus 1 over d. So if the size of i is at most n to the 1 minus d over d plus something small depending on delta, on delta a little o of 1 over delta, so we get a contradiction. Which means if we break up individual of this size, everything inside there doesn't have an algebraic curve. And two of the algebraic curves intersecting with gamma by Bezu's theorem have at most like whole one intersection points. So therefore, well, the theorem follows. So All these break points, and then talk about the higher dimensional conversion to the physical view that come up. Yes.